I say it right? Yes. Look up. Okay. Louisville. You're good. Okay, Louisville. But not Looneyville. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's, the, that, that's how you spot the tourists. Okay, fair enough. All right, so cool. Well, then thank you so much for joining us. Um, what I'd like to do if it's okay with you is just sort of let's go down memory lane for a little bit. And uh, uh, you were uh, born in Little Rock? No, Little Rock. Little Rock. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, tell, us, tell us what that is. I don't, I don't, is there a town across the river? What? Like here, like is there a town across the river? Yes, we like you all. So it'd be like saying if you're from Jefferson, saying you're from Blue Hill. You're not. Right. But it was Little Rock was, they call it Dog Town because of the old days. I think I've heard. Yeah, and the, because it was like the hillbillies lived in Little Rock and the rich people lived in Little Rock. So they would go with their dogs across the river and go to the rocks. So we were called dog town. Oh. So there was a rivalry. Like yeah. the rich kids like to play with the rock. Mm -hmm. We were in the public. As Floridian, yeah. Uh, you live in Florida or you live in Miami. Right. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's one, one of them like the yeah. other. So uh, I was cool with that. I wanted to kind of go back to the early stuff. Um, I don't know if it's uh, Wikipedia nonsense, but did you really have a big part in Exorcist 2? No. No. Uh, All right. That, that looked fishy. Yeah. That looked really fishy. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, really. But uh, it kind of made, uh, made a mark uh, of Married with Children, and it's it's not one but two spinoffs. Yeah, I, my very first acting job was um, Top of the Heat. There was a spinoff of Married with Children with Joe Bologna and Rita Moreno and Matt Long. I, I, I love Joe Bologna. He was great. Yeah, yeah, he was just a yeah. very underrated figure. Yeah, and he actually told me a story about how he'd wear a piece of bologna in his shoe whenever he was performing, especially on stage. Yeah. Just to, to sort of, like, know <laughs> that he had, like, Yeah, because, like, I have one over an audience somehow. Um, they don't know if it's a piece of in my shoe. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But the network hated the show, but they liked that a lot. So, what about him? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, he's doing a great show. Yes, he is. Um, so, I was under contracts I couldn't work uh, while they were rebranding. So, yeah. Ron Levitt gave me two guest stars on Married with Children so that I could cover it. And then they revamped the show because they knew Bobby. And then, yeah. Yeah. And we did six of those and we did it. <laughs> yeah. Our weekend meeting notes like, make Raises IQ three points, lower it three points. Well, it's it, it's a it's a straight dichotomy because Mary Children is the huge uh, bank that it was, and it's not very often you hear we hate it, but do another one. Right, yeah, I was, right. that, that's why I was so curious about yeah. that journey. It was yeah. they usually don't give hateful second chances. I know, I know. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I was happy to be working. They like the cast. So, yeah, and I was happy happy to be working. So that would be too. And then uh, had a bit part in Conan's. What's that experience like? Because that's a, that's a, yeah. That, that movie holds up. It does hold up. Um, <coughs> that was great. I'm trying to remember. It was after Days of Confused because Parker was in it and Michelle played the main role in it. Yeah. So it was after Days of Confused. I guess we all had a little meet and I went in and auditioned for Condes and Lauren Michaels was there. And it, I was trying to like, Ask questions about the character, figure out the role, and he was like, "Look, this has nothing to do with it. Just let it be what it is." Um, I was like, "Oh, okay." So I didn't get that. They gave Parker and I like the friends roles, but it was yeah. just great to hang out with them. So I'm trying to remember, I mean, Dan Aykroyd obviously, and he was telling me stories about how he would fight a little kid, um, which is when you can get to grips with it once. Yeah. Um, really interesting guy, and we kind of became friends, and his brother, and I was at a party at their house, and it, his brother was like in a room in a bathtub with some sort of contraption he had built that did something to the water that did something to you, I don't know. And it was just like stacks and stacks, and I mean, this was like before like conspiracy theories were on the internet. So yeah, it was just like because... A, a conspiracy theories, but like stacked to the ceiling. Yeah, Richard and, Belder, okay, but conspiracy theories. Yeah, yeah. Like and they were actually going out to bust a ghost that night and asked me to go with them. And I was like, hell yeah. And then I was like, you know what? No, because like, if there really was a ghost, I didn't, I didn't want to bust something. I was afraid it would come haunt me at my house or something. Like, I really believe 
they were so serious about it that I really believe they were the most important part that we needed to get busted. Well, no, yeah, I believe them. So I should have gone. I went back. Uh, Ghostbusting. Yeah, yeah. Girl. yeah. Just tell that to go by the Ghostbusters table upstairs. Yeah, yeah, tell them. Match the team. What? Yeah, taste and reviews. That's been another. That's another one that says, I won't say defined a generation, but that one is still keep popping up. How's that? That was, I mean, it was my first film. It was amazing. Um, we were in Austin for the events, you know, the kids hanging out. Uh, and Rick was just so um, amazing to work with. He let us write scenes. He let us, because we were basically, a lot of that movie was night shoots. So if you would work two nights and then have a day off and then have to work the next day, you had to stay up all night and keep yeah. it on schedule. So there were many nights, open night in the hotel, yes, hotel in Austin, and I think it is there, that we just stayed up in the lobby. Um, and so many, like Marissa and Matthew McConaughey, their characters kind of hooking up, was that came up in the lobby, like we were eating lunch. And Parker and I wrote so many scenes that Rick actually let us shoot in the lobby. Um, and it was just great to be, like I couldn't believe I was actually and what to be such a cool movie and what it with is. Rick. Yeah. I mean, and we didn't know at the time. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And it actually came in a long time. So, but it was just, I guess, like, when I, I, I feel bad for any kid kind of trying to start out now, because I feel like there's so much competition now. But at that time in Hollywood, it felt like every actor in that age range auditioned for these movies. And they had a final, like, Final callback. Is it Pizza Party? Who cares what Pizza Party is? No. That's awful. Um, <laughs> I've told this story so many times that I'm going to make it brief. Um, but basically, they invited everyone back and were like, it's going to be a Pizza Party, it'll be fun, it's on a Saturday. And so you went, and it was all your competition there. And, and so you're kind of supposed to just be like hanging out like you're having fun, you know, shoot the ship, but you're nervous as hell. And then they would like send you into a room. Other actors, and they'd say, You're going to meet Simone now, now you're going to meet this character, and you meet these people. And then they'd send you back out, and you go to wait. And then Parker was there, and she already had the role. She was like one of the few, because they'd already done auditions in New York. So she was just like smoking and relaxed, and I hated her so much. And I actually left and went to get an iced coffee at 7 Eleven. I was like, Here we go, I can't do this. And, um, this is bullshit. And, and then I was like, um, and then it got to where they started coming out and the producer would come out and like take you aside and take you to the oh, movie. So then like us that were left as the day went on, it was all day the night. We started hiding behind the scariest It was, the it was so over. Over. and I was like hiding behind holes. Like if I can just somehow manage to to not get found and not get pulled away, I'll get this movie and then finally got Or hear those movie. hear those dreaded words at any audition. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you for the pizza. Um, but then Don came and said, you know, let's go for a walk. Um, and I just couldn't believe it. It was great. And then Mob asked, again, like, it was a different time, but like, yeah. Mob Rights came out, it was Universal, it was the same producer, same cast and director. And then, and then, you know, that, that kid from Jersey was crazy. Yeah, like a yeah, movie. yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah. Store, which all the kids were eating up at and not home. Forget now that it was much harder in the VHS days to to get into the end of that. Yeah. Yeah, that was before the before the video comes up. But yeah, both both that stuff, yeah, and basic reviews, they flourished. Right. So the last really underground VHS days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until the uh, technological change. Yeah. So well since you brought up uh ball rats, so uh, why don't you tell us about uh Game of Hunger when uh, that was an
but she like passed on it, I guess. I don't know if she was a big party girl. And then they had the whole pizza party thing, and, and I didn't want to go to like, the pizza party. And, but then somehow, I don't know if it's like hard to do it or whatnot, I got it wrong. It was like three really years. So I went, I showed up, and I feel like I showed up after they had already started shooting. Like, they yeah. took a piece, we were all there for like a month before yeah. we started shooting, so everyone bonded. Um, we rehearsed a lot, and I feel like I just like got there. They were already shooting. I kind of had a like bad, I don't know, a bit of a chip on my shoulder because it was such a nightmare to actually go up there and um, and met Kevin, and and immediately like we just started giving each other shit, and and mine was kind of rough because I didn't like me, and like he like wasn't like dying to have me in his film, and it, we just started giving. And it just kind of became a little bit of friends And uh, that went off and uh, it did what it did. I, uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty, yeah, we can, yeah, yeah. we can do that, that's, that's. He did drive me to the airport when I was leaving and I had just gotten offered by him. I was about to say, was next. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's, that's one that is not as bad as I think people were expecting. No, like, I don't think you can't be by the because like, Mal Rex is going to come out, it's going to be huge, you do not want by the out. And I had just been through days and interviews with him because I didn't think he was going to do anything. So I was just like, I'm going to break both of these down. Um, and then he had a lot of out and came. And then he, but I love that film. And I had such an amazing time shooting that film. The producer, the director, sort of everyone like Vince Vaughn, John Favreau, like, and Kevin and stuff. Like everyone kind of had their clicks that they came up with in Hollywood. And yeah. that was the film where I found. And the director, we all became the best friends that we still are to this day. And we kind of come up to this together. We actually got together a year ago for the 20th anniversary of Biodome. So I don't watch my own movies. Like, I haven't seen, like, I don't think it's still a fan, not in all that. Um, I haven't seen it since it came out. <laughs> um, I need to watch it. But uh, I just keep watching my you're, own. You're in it, and um, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. I mean, I remember one really scene in particular, but um, I think a lot of guys so you're talking yeah. about. But she, someone brought me something, and it had like a little dialogue from the movie between me and Claire, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. But um, um, we watched uh, Biodome, which again, I haven't seen since it came out, yeah. and it was pretty intense. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Just, yeah. you know, just like, you know, some things get a weird it, main reputation. Yeah. yeah. So. I did a series called Seek and Pilla. Um, anytime somebody works with uh, in that part of it, I always ask them this uh, any animal stories <laughs> on the set? I, didn't, I don't feel like I didn't work with animals that much. Um, but Dave Barr was yeah. with me. And I just remember it was, a, I mean, it was a great, it was a great series again because I wasn't a regular, so they would just call it for like, yeah. Nice. Um, so the second Noah, it was about a, a writer who uh, marries into a family that owns a zoo. So yes, and hygiene, yeah. lots of kids and hijinks. Yeah, like they adopt kids and animals. Um, okay. So it's like all these kids, and it was ABC Family, and it was like I remember Dave and I used to. The chimpanzee ate my homework. <laughs> Dave and I used to like because some of their scenes were pretty awful. Very kind of on the nose dialogue. So we would practice the scenes with each other and we'd learn some bad so we thought it was good. Okay. So that when we actually filmed them, we didn't see them on those bad. <laughs> that worked. And then uh, at what point did uh, you get a call saying, hey, Kevin's making another movie you know, with a much bigger part? That, well, Kevin and I started dating. Yeah. So, um, um, again, and I apologize, I've told these stories a lot. But, um, he thought Marx was going to be a huge success. It wasn't. His Nanny was originally going to be um, a kind of John Hughes type film with the studio. And then, because Kevin really liked, I guess, working with Ben, Jason, and I. And um, so we were going to be teachers in a high school, and it was going to be like a high school student that was gay, like that school that was like super high school students. And he was like, you 
know, I go from the end to great, and then we start cleaning, and then water's coming out in the tank, and I think he kind of had a, a bitter taste in his mouth, having worked with the studio where they average those per page, and blah, 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 and decided to go back to his roots, and then at the same time, he and I were having troubles with, like, to, I mean, using the word, but like, typical relationship. I wasn't gay, but it was just like, I had friends who, and like, at the time, Kevin was such a square, like, he made me drink more glasses than I wanted. Like, smoking pot was like the worst thing for me. And I smoked pot, and my friends smoked pot, and I was very uncomfortable. And, and then I think there was just a little bit of, um, like, I was always in awe of Kevin that he was able to kind of become who he was as an artist, having never left New Jersey, where I grew up in Arkansas and felt so stifled and couldn't figure out. It took me having to move and travel and go through a lot of experiences to kind of find myself. And he was able to find such a strong voice in having never left, but, it, but he seemed threatened of my experiences. I mean, it's just beyond me. Yeah, yeah, in your 20s. Yeah, yeah. so like, he started writing. We're 20 something, so yeah. And in Hollywood. Yeah. And yeah. you were in the system. And yeah, just, yeah. So it could have ended a lot worse for both of you. It could have. And so a lot of the scenes, I think, were kind of, like, he would write them. So I was with them when he was writing each other. So a lot of the scenes felt somewhat like apologies. And him trying to grapple with, with you know, yeah. understanding. Because I remember at one point, um, he dated this girl in high school, film whatever. And they were still in each other's lives, which was fine with me. And he was going to go to her graduation and call her graduation. I was like, that's awesome. And he got so mad at me because I wasn't mad at him. For, you know, it's just like, you don't love me. And it's like, I do. I just love you. Like, you know, I, I think that's awesome. You guys are so good. Anyway, it was just a lot of that. All that tumultuousness, it, it kind of leveled both of you up, though. It, it knocked him from, oh, maybe this kid isn't just, you know, the, the part joke here. And I think it, 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 it definitely leveled you up as an actress. Yeah, I mean, in that first leading role, um, it was such a great character to play in. So Absolutely. It was a leading role. And I think, personally, I'm biased, but I, you know, it's my favorite film to play in. Because I think Kevin does have such a huge heart. Speaking of big, uh, after that, you know, Big Daddy. That's another cute one that I, 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 I still think holds up quite well. Yeah, yeah. I was lucky. I was in a lot of these kind of things. Yeah. Films. Um, I mean, that's... And that was, and, and Sandler was, was, was still kind of on his rise, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was, that was a good time. Again, it was good timing. Yeah, I mean, I remember actually, what was the film before it? Was it Happy Gilmore? It was Happy Gilmore. Was the one that kind of like put it got going, and then there was uh, the one where he played the, the, the grown up guy at the back of school. Okay. Billy Madison. Billy Madison. Billy Madison. I guess that one came out. <laughs> okay. Thank you for holding the room. Thank you. Oh, sure. Hi, 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 hi. Yes. Long, 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 long. So, that's like, I'm losing. Um, so. You guys are no, 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 it's a story about that to do what I got right now. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Yeah. You might be on a creator stage, I think, which is, uh... This is 10105? This is 10107. Yeah. 10105. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no worries, no worries. You can join us if you like. Let me tell you. Right up, Phil ladies and gentlemen. He's here with all of you. Get it. Nice and amazing stuff. Thank you so much. Just 
so sweet and humble about it. I just, just give me an excellent. Absolutely. I'll give my friend. Yeah. Um, you start dabbling in a. You had a couple of hits at, uh, at voice work. Uh, did a character, one of the animals on Doctor Who 2. Played a character on Stripperella. <laughs> Everybody remembers that? Co created by Stan Lee. And, uh, yeah, that one happens. And uh, did an episode of Scooby Doo. And uh, back around from there. Then, it seemed like you settled into some good run of TV work. But I want to jump ahead to uh, you got a great run on United States of Terra. Um, very, very underrated series. Yeah. And, uh, your role being seduced by her male multiple yeah. Everybody knows the show is about a woman who suffers multiple personality disorder, <laughs> and the personalities really go off on their own, and one of the personalities is a real tough pig. How are you doing, yeah. girl? You can do that. And just, yeah. Yeah, and character. then my character falls in love with that character, that personality of 24 hours. What was his name? Right. Yeah, it was so Which almost cartoonishly bad. Yeah. Like, Hello, my lady. Well, he, she's so <laughs> funny, funny. If you haven't seen the show, there's three seasons of it. She's amazing in it. Because um, all of the like different characters that she plays are all so different. And and I was actually so excited because that was my favorite character of the one she played. So I was glad that my character fell in love with that one. Um, but just watching her go from... What a gamut of Yeah, so many I mean, it really is such a good show. It's um, Yellow Cody. Yeah. Did you know? Really good show. <laughs> Seemed like, and the makers of Warren Black said, six personalities? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good play. Um, tell us about all the parts of Long Time. That is, because um, that looks like a tough, it's a dark, dark, dark. Yeah, um, I've heard about it, I haven't had a chance to see it yet. But. Yeah, there's a new streaming service called Flix Premiere, so, and it seems to me like, like the days of like just Amy playing in a theater for eight months are over. Like indie films don't really, you know, they're waiting in theaters for a couple of weeks. Um, but there's a streaming service called Flix Premiere that you can subscribe to, and it's where a lot of indie films now play. So the plot went down, but it's it's it was actually done by two brothers who are from my hometown, from Monroe, Arkansas, and I saw a short that they had done called Pillow that you can watch online. And it was just a uh, short, it's just like, you watch it and it was just, I just felt like they're so young and this is the first thing they've done. And yet, I already feel like I would recognize their work when I saw it. Um, and they had a script, so a friend of mine put in some money, the executive producer, I helped raise, they already had some money. Yeah. I had some friends in the little office put in some money, and he did it for like under three years. Um, and shot it in Arkansas off with Paul Sparks and Dallas Roberts. And it's just, I mean, it's a, if you don't like dark films, I don't recommend it at all because there's not one ray of light in it. But it's, I, I love the filmmakers. So if you do like dark films, I highly recommend it. When did you get uh, interested in directing? Because you made a, you, you started making yeah. a for that in the past couple of years. Um, did some episodes still the king? Yeah, I, I wrote and directed a film. I think, like, I mean, what have you worked with Rick Linklater and Kevin, who are both writer directors? There's a difference in those directors than directors that you work with and haven't written the script. Um, it's a different kind of experience, and and I think like Kevin, like you see something and you're like, I maybe I can do that. But mainly, I just started writing because acting is such a non-proactive position to be in. Like you, you can wake up and be like. I don't want to act, I don't want to work, and it, you're, you're just waiting for your phone to ring to say, like, Devin Hart, I have an audition, or, um, and I just found myself, like, out on a Tuesday night, waiting to, to I was at a bar on a Tuesday night, and it was like a hip bar in Hollywood, and these two young horticulturists somehow got in, and they recognized me and started talking, and the bar was closing, so we were party at Jason's house in Frederick Biodome, and I invited them, and they said that it's two. And I said, it's two what? And they said, it's two of the What's the special occasion? And I just had this kind of epiphany, and it, I just sort of flash forward and feel like, this is how you end up having a club in the summer, right? You can see this how it happens, because I had no reason to get out of bed yeah. the next day. And I think that a lot of actors do that, right? Because it's 
so depressing to wake up, not to go to work. Like, ready to get into work and, you know, itching to go and not have anything to do. So, so I got up the next morning and started writing the script probably from early morning, thinking I would act it. And, and mainly just writing because, like, Chasing Amy was a rare opportunity. There's just not a lot of female characters that I see on screen, more so now. I wasn't too, but at the time, it just felt like I was all, like, you're the big daddy. Like, you work your ass off, and then you finally get a play for a film like Casey Amy, and your reward is to play Adam Sandler's girlfriend. You know, it's a very kind of one note, laugh at his jokes, yeah. set up. Um, and I did a few more, like, mini films, but it just, like, they always, it was always like someone's girlfriend, someone's fiance, yeah. someone's, or the best friend. And they just want complicated rules. So I started writing. I heard a story about the actress, what's her name, Sean? Sort of crazy. Sean Gelly? Yeah, she wanted to play Catwoman. Yeah, Sean Gelly. Yeah. And she like got a cat suit and went to the producer's office. She was like, she was on a talk show and she started around saying, Yeah, I'm gonna be the next cat. Right, right. And she I guess she was in contention, but she didn't land. Right. And then she stormed uh, Tim Burton's office uh, because he had been ducking her because right. he cast, and he was literally hiding under his desk. She right. walked in there looking for him, and he was literally looking for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I heard these stories. Yeah. And I was like, I, like, I, there's no role that I don't want that bad. <laughs> like, what role would I do that for? Yeah. Um, and so I started writing just a female character that I felt like I could relate to, thinking I would act in it. And then I finished the script, and my agent was like, this is good, you know, let's find a director. And, and it started becoming like, well, there's this guy, and he did the latest book commercial. It wasn't like some director that I wanted to work with, or movies I liked was getting a lot of directors. And so I finally just made the decision to direct it myself. Because it's like, I, and my agent encouraged me, just because it's like, I picked out all the music. I wanted to shoot in Arkansas, do the location. I, it would have killed me to go, and it was a very southern movie, and, and it's such a fine line that to, to walk between like it becoming a caricature to southern people and not talk like it enough. So right. like, I mean, there was like you know painful discussions about is there a hammock in front of Cal's house or just a folding chair? You know, like what's gonna tip it past that point? And I had worked so hard in the script to not make it that that I would have been in hell if some director. They say one of those funny country things. So I decided to direct it. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I was so fortunate that Ashley Judd read the script and wanted to do it with me. So she's been on board. So I got to direct Ashley was in it. Um, Scott Wilson was in it. Pascal Bain was in it. So, I got a chance to see what that was a real job. He's the most funny thing I ever. Um, so yeah, so I got to invite you, right? Got into Sundance and then got distribution and closed my contraction. Um, and then after that, I got a job writing a screenplay for a book about Texas Monthly um, based on a Texas Monthly article about a bank robber, it's a true story, it's amazing. Um, and then just kept writing and kind of acting, and it was just always so nice to have. Like, it, it's just great to have sort of all three that I can do because directing is so completely consuming and will take years of your life. Writing is very lonely and kind of makes you feel crazy. Because <laughs> it's where you battle the demons, you really do. Like you wake up in the morning and it's like, no one wants to hear what you have to say, you're stupid, you don't cry, da 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 you don't have to get through all that. Um, but it's something I can do on my own. I don't need anyone in it. And then acting is great because like I'll write for a while and it's like I have to get away from the desk and I just want to be told where to be, what to say, and here's my lines, thank you. You want me to wear this? Awesome, you got my purse, let's go. Um, you don't have to be any kind of, it's more of a collaboration, and writing is, is not something that can be hard. So it's nice to kind of have all three, and I'm about to um, go out and write a script. Cool, can you tell us about that, or is this? No, it's called Star Theater, um, and it's just, it's just a story about how important it is to kind of have your own dreams and stay true to them. And it's about a 17-year-old kind of lives alone and like out of control child actor actress who gets a fan letter from a kid at his normal town and it's at a low point in her life and she's just been arrested. Um, and she decides like this is her movie. And in a 
Congrats to Darwin for being here. Yeah. Um, and he's watching the movies right now, and it kind of adds, you know, we make assumptions about people when we meet someone, we kind of project on them. If you want them to be, yes. and if you predict to be something you think they want, and so she ends up going, and it turns out like he doesn't really put one on one, because that isn't how you describe it. And it turns out that like she can't see is not what he kind of thought she was.
if you're just trying to sort of express your vision and have the story you like to tell, and that's, those aren't the questions that you would normally be asking yourself. And I feel like now there's, there's so much opportunity to go in and do film. Is there a, besides the other ones you work with, is there a, a filmmaker who's like work in this type of I mean, I, you know, I think again, Richard and Kevin influenced me a lot, but um, and I like, I like, I guess my sort of feelings about film were born when I was younger, so it was like Peter Murphy and those kind of 70s films where once I left Arkansas and realized, like, I remember I saw Public Bird in the Village on HBO in Arkansas, and it kind of blew my mind. Like, I had never been exposed, and that is really that kind of art to the film, but it was still like, I hadn't seen anything, and I was like, this is. Cool. I like this, and then discovering like some of the great films like the Southern Studies and Generals, and that's kind of where. But then, like now, like for a, I mean, long, I for a long know, time, Gloria was like my third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. You see, maybe there are scenes where you like this yeah. strong female. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now, like I like, um, I like I'm saying, but just like, like I love Milan Rouge and um, what's his name? Yeah. 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 yeah.
Okay. Joy Lauren Adams, ladies and gentlemen.